Okay. So I've been trying to bring you guys real patient testimonials here and there, because I think you need to hear it in order for you to have hope in order for you to know that things can change. And I like it when I bring in people that may have been a little skeptical in the beginning, I'm just saying, but who dove in head first, did all the things and came out the other side, just an absolute freaking rock star. So with me today, one, I mean, I, 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 I ha I love all of you who are my patients, but there's some crazy batshit ones that just touch my heart. And Angelique, you, you love me the most. <laughs> oh my God. My just, heart you know, is going to stop right now. <laughs> you, you know, you're just, you're, you're, you're my soul sister. I swear to God. I mean, she sends me gifts. I mean, like GIF, not gifts, like as in GIFTS, but. Just well, I mean, I would. shit that makes me <laughs> crack up on a daily basis. So, Angeliki, thank oh, you so you much. Oh, you make me feel so good. Thank you for that. I'm so excited to be here. Like I said, I've been like, like when we first started, I was like, I'm going to be her favorite. And I told everyone and I was like, I'm going to be on here one day. And it's just really exciting. I'm so excited. I mean, you know, you, you run a really close race with Gabriella and a couple others, but you know, you're, you're right up there, girl. So, all right. We're, I, I told you, I'm going to guide you in this. So I, okay. I'm, I really want to start at the beginning because you were a little skeptical because you had been through all the horse crap that everybody else has gone through, right. And trying to find help with this thyroid and hormone thing. So start at the My beginning. My entire life. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm just going to go over just a few things that I thought were relevant. Um, I was obese but as a child. Um, I probably weighed 200 pounds in sixth grade. I remember it being like a, a topic of conversation all the time and trying like a whole bunch of different diets. Um, I started my period at 11. At 16, I started having irregular periods and I would have like nonstop periods. So it would last for three weeks. I would be off for a few days and then it would come back for another few weeks. Um, when I was 17, I started to see a gynecologist and they treated me with prednisone and birth control, mm. but not birth control to where like you took it monthly. They, I took one pill for one day, two pills for two days, three pills for three days, four pills for four days, working myself up to five a day, trying to stop the bleeding. When that didn't work, they did DNC. And I don't know if everyone knows what that is, but it's scraping the uterine lining in order to stop me from menstruating. Because you were how old? Like, how old when they did the DNC? 17. That's really young too. Yeah, that's it, it, ablation, DNC. I mean, we do it on older women now if their hormones are imbalanced and they have a thickening of the uterine lining, but to do it on a 17-year-old just to reduce the heaviness of, the flow is crazy. Well, so I was getting my period for months at a time, like so much so that I was having a reaction to maxi pads and tampons. Like it was miserable. Mm -hmm. They did so many DNCs that they told me they had to stop because they were going to damage my uterus. Then yeah. they referred me to a fertility specialist because maybe, you know, maybe you don't ovulate at all. Mm -hmm. So I go to a fertility spe uh, specialist at John, uh, excuse me, at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore supposed to be the best in the state. Um, you know, they put me through a series of labs and tests and the doctor asked me if I plan on having kids. So I'm 19 at this point. And I said, well, not today, you know, but in the future, maybe. Right. And he recommended a hysterectomy and said that even with the hysterectomy, the bleeding might stop, not stop because it might just be hormonal. But my hormones are in range. So they don't know what's going on. They have no answers for me. So after that, I find a new gynecologist. We start prednisone again. And I don't know if anyone has the type of reaction that I do to prednisone, but I'll gain like 15 to 20 pounds in a week yep. from it. It's like, horrible. And, and it does not come off. It doesn't. I've struggled with obesity my entire life. That's the other thing doctors are telling me. You know, I'm like, I'm probably like 240 pounds by the time I'm 19. And they're like, oh, it's because of your weight. You know, uh, you need to lose weight. And I've tried freaking everything. I even had shots as a child to try to lose weight. I mean, I did everything. Um, so I find a gynecologist that's a nurse practitioner. 
and we do the prednisone and we do birth control again and that doesn't work and just happens that she's reading an article about PCOS. She finds an endocrinologist in the area and she refers me to him. Um, and at this point I've like gained so much weight and I'm trying to lose weight and because everyone's telling me it's because of my weight and I'm like, well, I'm going to show everyone it's not my weight. You know what I mean? So by the time I get to the endocrinologist, I'm probably like 30 pounds down. Um, he did the labs on me and my hormones are in range. So couldn't really say that I had polycystic ovarian syndrome, but he did tell me that was I was insulin resistant. Mm -hmm. Um, and that seems to be like an underlying thing that I, I have problems with, but my diet hasn't always been correct. So, which we know now, I mean, that insulin (laughs) resistant could have been tied to PCOS because there's so many, there's changes in the diagnostic criteria. So just the fact that you had wackadoodle periods and insulin resistance. Yeah. But then as we're going to find out from you, it could also have been tied to a thyroid problem that wasn't diagnosed. So yeah. Keep you know, going. if it wasn't, yeah, if it wasn't my entire life, then it definitely happened next. So yeah. treated with glucophage, lost weight, was in the gym all the time, get to, and I'm like 22, 23 at this time. I'm down to 175 pounds. It's the smallest I've been in my adult life. Um, I feel pretty good. I keep the weight off and then I get pregnant at 31. And at 31, um, like my pregnancy was hard. Like it was emotionally stressful. My family didn't talk to me. Um, I, I told my job a week after, like I told my job I was pregnant a week after I was let go for the recession. Uh, so I lost my job. So I'm, I'm definitely in like a, a depression, you know, my yeah. body's changing. I gained 93 pounds. I delivered almost a month late. Um, all I know is that I was hyperthyroid after giving birth. But after I had my son, I lost weight. Six months in a year, I was back down to my previous weight. Now, the entire pregnancy, my sister told me that I had Hashimoto's because it runs in our family. Right. So my dad has Graves. My sister has Hashi and Graves. And Mm -hmm. all the women on my father's side have Hashimoto's after they have children. Yep. Because that pregnancy flips the switch. I mean, that's, that's classic autoimmune. And one of the big switch flippers of autoimmune is pregnancy, even though it's a natural thing. And, you know, it's not well, like a, a toxin coming in, it, but it is a stressor on the body. So yeah, definitely. But then my sister's daughter is diagnosed at 17 with Hashi. So did I have it my whole life? Like, I don't know. I struggled with my weight my whole life. I had a problem with exhaustion and hormones my whole life. Yeah, maybe, you know, and if I didn't, then this was definitely when it happened. Like I had massive weight gains. I have had problems like during this pregnancy, both, like I said, emotional and physical. Um, but after I lost the weight, I was able to get back to my um, weight before. I had no problems that I thought with exhaustion that weren't normal. I mean, I was a new mom, it's exhausting. Um, so I really didn't check on my thyroid or really pay attention to what my sister had to say because I didn't feel affected by it. Like I wasn't having these symptoms that she said she had. So um, at 33, I'm sorry, I got to take a sip of water. I'm so sorry for doing that. No, you can do that because Patty can edit out anything. So you're good. Okay, thank God. Okay. So at 33, I find out that I have pelvic fractures from my pregnancy and I've got a problem with my SI joint. So I go to the orthopedic. And then the next thing I know, I have a herniated disc in my lower back. And then I turn around and I have a herniated disc in my upper back. And the ortho finally said to me that you're too young to be having these kinds of problems. I think you have something autoimmune happening, Um, which I also have EDS, uh, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. I don't know, I never pronounce it right. Yep. Um, so I thought it was that. Uh, so anyway, she sends me for labs. I have a high ANA. They send me to a rheumatologist. I don't have polio or lupus. So I get referred to an endo and I go back to the gentleman who treated me for the PICO because in my mind, he fixed me. So I go in there and I say, Hey, I'm pretty sure I have Hashimoto. You know, my sister said it's in our family and he goes, okay. And he doesn't do any labs. He doesn't do anything. 
He gives me a glass of water and he tells me to take a big sip and tilt my head back and swallow the water. And he goes, you have Hashimoto's. And that's how he diagnoses me. And he doesn't accept insurance, but he said, it's something your primary can handle for you, but here's your diagnosis, you know, blah, 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 blah. go on your way. So I go to my primary, he gives me 88 micrograms of levothyroxine. Mm -hmm. Typical. And, like, let me tell you, I hate that. I hate that drug because the moment I started taking it is the moment I started having hypo symptoms. And the first year that they put me on it, I kept going off of it because I knew it was that that was making me feel like shit. And I kept telling them, it's this that's making me feel bad. I felt fine before, you know? <clears throat> so eventually like the doctor, he yells at me because he's like, you could die. And I'm like, oh shit, I could die. And he's like, <laughs> you know? So uh, at age 35, I'm on 112 micrograms of levothyroxine and I feel like shit and I'm gaining weight. And it's hard for me to stay at 200 pounds, like I have to fight for it. I'm in the gym seven days a week. I'm doing cardio, not yeah. lifting. I was like never a lifter until now. Um, but yeah, so that's where I was at uh, at 35. Also, let me mention this, mm -hmm. that my hypo symptoms were being misdiagnosed as ADHD symptoms. And so they kept raising my Adderall. And eventually I was on 50 milligrams of Adderall a day. and you, it just makes you feel worse. Like you just yeah. feel worse. And I kept like arguing with them that I didn't feel well and I would stop taking that medicine. And then I would complain about the symptoms and then I would get yelled out about not taking the amount of Adderall that I'm supposed to a day. Well, and realistically, I mean, I hate to say it because Adderall is just another Band-Aid medication for those who don't need it, who actually have a thyroid problem. But realistically, that was probably keeping you from going to like 250, 300 pounds because at least you got some of the appetite suppression of the, the Adderall while you're on T4 only. And just, I want to interject right. too really quick, just for listeners who, you know, haven't heard me ad nauseum with this. What you're saying is, the T4 only, it's not necessarily the Levo, although some people don't do well on generic T4, but the fact that you were on T4 only, no T3 in the mix, and all they did was more, 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 that just Correct. made you feel worse and worse. So yeah, I Correct. wanted to interject yeah, there. Mm -hmm. Well, so I, because I switched to Tiracent years later. So I felt different on Tiracent and my thyroid actually went hyper at the amount that they had me on Levo for. So, but okay. So I'm 35 now taking my medicine, like a good girl. I'm going to fast forward you a little bit here. So I don't bore everyone. Um, so between like 35 and 43, right. Yeah. Just during this time, I just got to tell you, I tried every freaking diet. Oh yeah. Like I have a library dedicated to Hashimoto's and diabetic diet and the freaking autoimmune protocol and the Hashimoto protocol and the shit didn't work. Yep. And I did everything. I kept exercising. I saw countless endos. I saw gynecologists because I'm like, Hey, they do hormones. No, everyone told me it was because I was obese. My symptoms, my thyroid labs are fine. You're normal. What's wrong with you? But they're not testing me right. They're not telling me how to do the lab even correctly. Like I took my, lab, I can't even say that the labs that I took are correct because I popped my um, T4 right before I went to go take my lab. So, you know, like, oh, it's, I'm sorry. It's, so, it's frustrating. It is frustrating. So I struggled for weight. Yeah. So, so this time I'm like, I'm at 220 now. Right. And I'm, I'm just like over it. I'm pissed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, at 40, I start getting mono every freaking year. And they tried to convince me that I must've had it when I was a child, but I'm telling you, I've never had mono in my life. Um, I'm starting to miss my period. 41. I have meniscus surgery. I gained 46 pounds that over that year. Between the time of my meniscus surgery and the time I'm 42, I'm 263 pounds. Oh, man. Yeah. That's, yeah. Like that first meniscus surgery, like it, it was horrible. Like I couldn't walk. When they finally removed it, it was fantastic. Like I could get up and move again, just physically. Um, but now I'm dealing with menopause symptoms. 
I'm 42, I'm 43 years old, and I'm missing my period every six months. And it goes pretty quickly from every six months to I'm missing it every three months to I'm only getting it every three months. And they run my sex hormone lab. One of my testosterone labs came back like less than three. Oh, you know, some women just go into menopause early. Angie, what can you do? Like, what, what you know, uh, sucks. You know, you can try to go to a gynecologist, but, you know, just what happens when you get older? So um, now we're at 2020 and we, we locked down for COVID, right? And I have an opportunity to eat, like plan my meals, eat good food, go on a diet, get this weight off, right? Yep. And um, I go on Atkins and I lose 50 pounds that year. I'm still missing my periods. Um, 44, like right before I turned 44 years old, after I had lost all that weight, um, for some reason, my TSH goes up. And I, I don't know, I don't know if this is like a magic number, but for some reason, they wanted my TSH to be a 1.5. Does that mean anything? I mean, there's some, there are some functional practitioners out there that they like the TSH between a one and a two. And, okay. you know, I, I tend to disagree because what if you do better at a point nine, what if you do better totally suppressed? What if you're on T3 only like I am, where your TSH is not going to be in existence at all? You're going to be rolling in at like 0. 0.0007. So right. it's kind of, you know, that tells me that it was somebody that was getting the thyroid where they didn't obviously want you WNL within normal limits. You know, oh, you have a TSH of a four. You're normal, quote unquote. Right, right. You wanted it lower, but they they were missing the mark still. Right, right. Exactly. Well, exactly. Yeah. So when my TSH goes up, they change my prescription to of Levo. So I'm taking 112 micrograms six days a week and 175 once a week. And then I start having more menopausal symptoms. And I'm talking about like, like now I'm not even worried about my thyroid. Like I'm like, F it, that's the rest of my life. This is how I'm going to feel with my thyroid. Because now my symptoms are freaking night sweat, like covered in sweat and water, changing my pajamas a few times a night, mm -hmm. hot flashes, word finding problems, but like having a conversation and, and like just blanking out and just forgetting what, what, the, what we're talking about. Right. And just like being hot all the time and, and peeing all the time and things like that. And I'm telling him about this and I'm like, I'm in so much pain, you know? Yeah. So my next lab was six weeks later, I gained 27 pounds oh in that six God. weeks after they raised my Levo. They raised it again because my TSH didn't drop down quick enough. So now I'm at 112 five days a week and 175 twice a week. And now my periods are just like gone. And I feel like I'm just constantly in PMS. I'm bitchy. I'm snappy. Like nobody would want to, I don't want to be around myself. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting in my bedroom, unable to move. And I'm 44 years old. Like I know, you know, I know things change in your forties, you know, right. things like, that, but I never expected to feel like an 80 year old woman at that age. And yeah. that, that my doctor would be like, oh, well, it's normal. Like, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. I'm having problems. Yeah. So, uh, so, but this is also, this is also a really important year because I reconnect with a friend and she's the person that gets me to you. Um, so, all right. So now we're into, I'm sorry, we're into 2022 somewhere, right? Right. And my how, doctor, how much do you weigh at this time now? Because you gained those 26, 27 pounds. Now, what is the scale up to? So my scale is 247. Okay. So we're at 247. Okay. So we're at 247 yeah. in March. Okay. And my, I tell my doctor, we have a long conversation about how I keep gaining weight. And I tell him I've been doing Atkins. This is what I do. Look, I'm writing this shit down. Like, here's the evidence. And like, they don't believe you. Like when you're obese, they don't believe that you're on a diet because you don't have the willpower to right. like stay on a diet or commit to something. Um, so he restricts, yeah. he restricts my diet to 800 calories on Atkins, which is like nothing. It, it's like nothing. 
No. So on top of all the symptoms, now I'm just hangry and bitchy all the time. And I'm just like taking handfuls of almonds because that's the only thing I can have a snack of. Um, somewhere between May and June, my friend, like I said, Fergie, she sends me your podcast. And I don't listen to it at first because there's no offense. I don't like listen to podcasts. Yours is like the first and only that I've listened to. Mm -hmm. Um, And like this whole time, right, she's talking to me about T3. And I don't have Facebook either. So she's sending me screenshots of your Facebook page, Girl Fix Your Thyroid. And she's like, Angie, you got to try T3. And I'm like, what the hell is she talking about? You know, because she... So let me backtrack a little bit here. 2021, I reconnect with my friend, Elizabeth Ferguson, who we were like really good friends in high school. I haven't spoken to her in five years. She has Hashimoto's and she has it like bad. She said her TSH was like 59 and I never heard of it. So I'm talking to her and I'm like, oh, I have that too. Yeah. And she's like, well, do you ever feel better? And I was like, no, girl, I feel like shit all the time. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Like, I constantly feel like I'm about to get the flu or I have the flu or I'm getting sick or I'm about to get sick. I'm tired all the time. No, it's not. Sorry. Like, you know, and she starts sending me things from, from you. And I'm like, this is a scam. What is she talking about? She is, this is, this is bullshit because me of all fucking people who have been to all these doctors who are like, I'm like, please give me something else. Please mm-hmm. say there's something else we can do for my thyroid. No one ever, ever mentioned to me that there was NDT, that there was T3. No one ever told me that shit. And I just like go around and like, I'm trying to like change my diet, but it's not going to matter because I don't convert. Like I just like, I need a T3 to have a life. Yep. And I've never had a life like, like it is like this. Yep. And like, thank God, because she was asking me for advice to begin with. Thank God she didn't listen to me because I was giving her like absolutely wrong advice. Like she should have never listened to me. Thank God she found you. Thank God she like got me to you. She's actually, I think I'm like the third or fourth patient that's actually worked with you that is referred from her. Um, And she tries to like get help for herself because she's in the Netherlands. And she like wants to, if there was like a way and I could convince you to take her on as a patient because of all people, she deserves it the most. Well, here, you know? we'll, just do, we'll just do a shout out to Elizabeth. We can guide her, right? So Elizabeth, thank you for sending Angelique because I love her. Uh, but yeah, we can guide her in the medication to take for sure. And there are sites out there where you can self sort. I mean, like legit sites that you can self-source because not every country has T4, T3, NDT on lockdown, prescription based only, like we do in the US and in Canada. Right. So well, we can help her. She, we just got to go. That guide. would be amazing, Dr. Amy, because, like, if it wasn't for her, I, I had given up. You know what I mean? And if it wasn't for her going, Angie, what was your vitamin D? Do you know you're supposed to take it with vitamin K? Like, no, no one told me that. Do you know the minute I did, like, my vitamin D went up by 20 points every month? or what I, whatever the unit is. I, it had been a 23 for 10 years. I had been taking 50,000 IUs a week and it m- did not move the numbers. No. And I say it to my doctor all the time and he's like, oh, it doesn't matter. And I'm like, but I have proof. Like there's years proof. That's conventional sick medicine for you. So there you go. Yeah. All right. So you were a little bit skeptical. I mean, you started- I was definitely started- skeptical taking in what Elizabeth was sending you and what your friends were sending you, but what was kind of like the turning point for you? Your podcast, this okay. right here. Cause like, like I would speak to you like a rude person at the movie theater. I'd be like, shut up. What did you just say? And I would go and I would like print my lab and I would like make my husband listen to your podcast. And I'm like, she's saying every fucking thing I've been complaining about for the past 13 years, like this woman is saying everything I have been saying. <laughs> like It's just, it frustrated me to no point. So then we get to like, and I'm upset. Like I, like at this point, like I'm stalking your website. And I, I even like, I sent an email to you and I, and I was like, Hey, I'm stalking your website because I heard of this miracle drug T3. Like what the hell? Uh-huh. Um, so I think it was by September or October, 2022 that I was like, she can fix me. 
like it was quick as soon as I heard your podcast like faithful listener listen from beginning to like present like uh yeah it was just in my heart I was like this Dr. Amy can fix me and at first I thought that my doctor was like to come along for the journey because of course you know he would like me to feel better and you know now I have someone that can work with him and I go to an appointment with him in October and I have a list I have the list I freaking took to him. I don't know if he said we are on camera or not, but I handed him this list of all my freaking symptoms. Really long. I'm not going to bore you with them, but there's about 50 or 60 here. And I stopped writing them because I didn't want to overwhelm them. Mm -hmm. Right. So when I say, this is what's going on with me. This is what I want to address. I'm having a problem. You say that I'm in menopause. I think it's Hashimoto's, which, you know, turns out it kind of was. Yep. Um, and he says to me that my numbers are fine and that this is due to obesity. <laughs> and he gives me this freaking referral. No, he gives me two referrals, Dr. Amy. He gives me one for sleep apnea and another one for gastric bypass surgery. Oh, okay. And I was like pissed because I've watched my 600 pound life and that's not who I was. I'm not over here overeating. I'm over here like starving myself, trying to lose weight. And you must not believe what I'm telling you. Right. Well, like you said earlier, they don't, they, they blame overweight slash obese people for not having willpower. willpower. And I mean, okay. Do you have a, a handful of people that maybe would benefit from the gastric sleeve or gastric bypass because they can't stop eating? Sure. But I would bet money that the majority have something underlying like you did that can be addressed to really change things without resorting to surgery. Yeah, I absolutely, I have to rant about that for a minute because my entire life I've struggled with obesity, mm-hmm. not just being overweight, dear God, that would be a blessing for me. It is freaking obesity. And every single time it has been hormone related. And if there's any doctors listening, I have to say F you do better. Yep. Like, don't think that I'm lying to you automatically. Prove it. <laughs> it'll be easy but if I'm coming to you and I'm frustrated and I'm crying in your office yep dear god do something I agree they're Your just patient. and you know they hate women too stop hating women I don't know what it is I think it's like I think it's like the, the foundation of western medicine is to be biased against women well and there's no ever sit about us yeah, we, we always get left out of studies too. So all of the studies that you see are mainly done on men. I mean, even the one that I often reference is how optimal testosterone levels will reduce Hashimoto antibodies in men. Like this study was done in men, even though women get hit with Hashimoto's like 90% more than men do. But we're going to do right. a study on testosterone's effect on Hashimoto antibodies in men. I mean, I'll take it as proof that there is a connection, but it was done in dudes. I mean, right. Yeah. 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 It's unfair. Like we really, we need to like, we need to do something to change it. This just needs to be changed how we get treated, and especially like people struggling with weight problems. Yep. Like it's just unfair. Like, yep. I don't know about, I, I don't know if you've ever been obese. I don't think you have maybe overweight, maybe. Um, overweight, but not obese. Right. Every freaking time I go to a doctor's office, they weigh me when I'm obese. When I'm a normal weight, they ask me. Uh, and it is frustrating when you have a weight problem to keep seeing that freaking scale not move. It is like beyond emotionally frustrating. Yeah. So that's yeah. where I'm at. And then then we come to you. And I'm like, all right, this lady says she can fix people. I'm gonna do exactly what she said. And she's going to fix me or I'm going to complain. <laughs> that was my thought process. Cool. Yeah. yeah. I was like, Happy all right. I That's Best all right. I ever did in my life. Completely changed my perspective on how I spend money on myself and what I deem too expensive as to, oh my God, you were talking about my life here, you know, and my health not too expensive mm-hmm. not you know what I mean yeah 
So totally. So we found out that yes, you don't convert well <laughs> at nope. all. And yeah. then that totally explains why increasing the T4 over and over again made you worse because they're you know, it's pushing up the reverse T3. And then you were never until you saw me, you were never put on any bioidentical hormone. Yes, they wanted to throw birth control ad nauseum at you, but you were never even given bioidentical progesterone. Nothing. Nope. Nothing. No. Yeah. No. They just, no. <laughs> the birth control is serious. Like, like, it made me a wreck. I just cried all the time. That's all I remember. I was just fat and I cried all the time. Yeah. Synthetic hormones just literally being pumped into your body. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. So what do you feel was, what do you feel was the turning point in your health? Or what would you say it was the combination of everything that we were doing? Coming off the T4, 100%. Coming off the T4 as soon, as soon as I came off of that, my periods became regular. Okay. And I, I mean, I can't prove it. I don't have science. It's just. It's well, we fact. have numbers. Yeah, no, we have, we have, we have your numbers. I won't go deep into yeah, yeah. lab values, but can you share with the listeners what, what medication you're on now? Let, let me, let me preclude that with, I'm very open with sharing medication doses, all of that, but you always have to say to people, just because we share this doesn't mean you go out and do the exact same med and exact same dose. Cause every single person is different. Some need T3 only, some don't. Some need a higher T3 than T4, but they need T4 in the mix. Some don't, you know, so I just want you to share because people are probably thinking, well, what what right. she changed to? What'd she change to? So share that. So I came off T4 completely and I take 100 micrograms of T3 only, split dose, 50 in the morning, 50 in the evening. Yep. Best, best I've ever felt in my life. Immediately felt different taking T3 as soon as that dose changed. Yep. Because my doctor had put me on five micrograms and I had the worst Hashimoto symptoms during that time. Like I, I did not poop for a month when I was on the five micrograms and I like begged him to put me up another five and he wouldn't do it. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. and that's the whole shutdown too. So again, for those of you listening, I always say five micrograms is like enough for your cat, right? I mean, it's just, or dog, if you love dogs, I love dogs. Um, if, if you bring in, I mean, this can happen with T4 as well. There's that negative feedback loop, but it definitely happens with when you bring in T3 in any form, be it NDT or lyothyronine, and you don't give enough. And I'm talking like that five micrograms of T3 or people who are put on 30 milligrams of armor. It's like this itty bitty dose that is just enough to shut down your own production. So if your thyroid gland was still pumping out a little bit of T3, now it's not because now your pituitary says, ah, screw it. You don't have to make any more thyroid hormone. There's enough in the system. We see it here, Absolutely. but it's During not. During that time, my reverse T3 went from a 13 to a 21.7 during that month. So by the time I get to you and to your practitioner, I'm like, I, I've just been pain. I'm like, please, can somebody just give me something to go to the bathroom? Like, dear Lord. Yeah. It was horrible. Yeah. Um, okay. So also, so I'm T3 only, mm -hmm. 100 micrograms. I also take 0 0.04 milliliters of testosterone. Yep. The really baby dose because. I wasn't able to start testosterone right away because I had that, I had some iron issues going on. Um, so I'm also on 200 milligrams of progesterone. Uh, Monjaro, I was on, is it Monjaro? Yeah. Yeah. Terzepatai, Monjaro. Yep. Um, so I was on 2.5 uh, for most of the time. Mm -hmm. Lost a lot of weight. Um, so most of the time I was on 2.5, I'm on that, I'm on five now, but I have pushed myself out to 14 days. Yeah. So I'm coming off of it. Yep, exactly. Um, We're what else? Oh my God. All now. the supplements. Where's your <laughs> weight? Oh my God. I went from 239 when you and I first met to I'm 154. I am 154. <laughs> I weigh 154 <laughs> pounds, y'all. Like, in, I have never in my life weighed this much. I think third grade, 
second grade? Are you shitting me? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, and it just, it it like, it came off. Like the first, I remember I texted you once. I think I lost 16 pounds in a week and I was like, holy shit, this is great. But is this bad? You know, like, I don't know. I think I lost like 40 pounds within the first two months. Right. And then consistently after that, six to 10 a month. And I've been like, I've been working really hard for it too. Well, that's so the other thing. You do all the things. So I think it's important to say that as well, because after you, you know, lead with all your medications, we don't want somebody going, oh, well, it figures. She's on a lot of T3 and she's taking terzebitai. And nah, 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 nah. because nah. I have other people that are on almost identical doses of both. T3, we got the testosterone in the mix. We we might even have more testosterone in the mix. We got progesterone. We got the estradiol. We got the trisepatide and they're still not losing. Now I'm not saying that everyone, that it's, it's diet, it's, but, but you were doing all the things you really were doing all the things. Absolutely. I, I busted my ass. The diet at first was hard for me to figure out because it felt like I was eating just so much because I had been starving myself for so long. Um, but no, I do everything. I do the supplements. I do um, stress reduction, cannabis. Um, I do the diet to a freaking tea. I do go off of it sometimes, but it's like one day, one time. I actually had cheesecake recently and it was delicious, but I'm suffering the consequences. Gotta like, live, right? Um, no, I've done, and uh, past three months I've been... Well, I'm getting to weightlifting. I have a, a, a personal trainer now. I paid him for the year because if I pay him in advance and I'm going to stick to it. Mm-hmm. Um, so he, uh, he said I needed to learn how to balance myself before we could lift heavy shit, but he agrees with you and he will have me lifting it soon. Yeah. So I've started with that, but no, no, I've been on it. Like I've done the, the supplements. I've done everything that you told me to do. Cause I was like, this is, this is it. Like it's, it's her or it's like the rest of my life. This is it. Right. I'm going to feel like shit. And now so. you've literally taken your entire journey and turned it into a pain of purpose journey because you are back in school getting your, it's the functional diagnostic nutrition cer- certificate, right? Yes. It's crazy the way this shit has worked out and how many, like you have introduced me to so many new things. It's just, it's, freaking amazing like just yes I'm doing FBN yeah um I had to to stop for a little bit because we had a plumbing catastrophe <laughs> and then we had feces everywhere and they had to clean and it's gross <laughs> like, but uh yeah yeah that'll lot. put a wrench it's a lot of information dude I feel a little overwhelmed sometimes because they're just giving us everything but yeah, you're taking it, in. it I think it's a oh, yeah, definitely. program but yeah, F- FDN is great. It's a great program. But th- I mean, the point is, is that you you have taken your lifetime of struggles and now you are getting trained to now help other people. Feel better. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, I do. I'm I'm so excited about this and I'm so grateful for you. Like you have no idea how much I needed you in my life. And I'm so happy that you're here. And I'm so glad you like me. I don't know who Gabriella is, but girl, we're in competition because I'm going to be texting you more often. <laughs> oh kidding. my God. I love you. You cracked me up. <laughs> well, no, thank you so much for sharing your story because there were so many points and I didn't want to stop you. I want to just keep, but I was thinking in my head, so many listeners are going to resonate with that. So many listeners are going to resonate with that point. Because as you're speaking, I'm literally hearing the stories of multiple other people. So, you know, we kind of all share a very, not the same. I mean, you went through a shit ton more than, than, than I did, than most of us did with decades of struggling with weight and no answers, but your story really resonates with a lot. So I thank you for sharing it. Thank you so much for letting me be here. Absolutely. Well, thank you for being here. And you know, we all look forward to you getting out into the world to help others because it's, it's, it's key. I think when we go through something like this, that's the point is to be able to pass it on and help someone else. So I love you. And thank you. Thank you. I love you too. You're so sweet. I love you so much. (laughs) (laughs) I, I love you back girl.